Tonight, Southwest Development Commission bill set to address infrastructure and population challenges. National Assembly appoints substantive clerk. Plus, as the National Assembly awaits the presentation of 2025 budget, correspondent looks at the significance of MTEF in the budgeting process. A warm welcome to the news on NTA Parliament. I am Stella Inameti. As stakeholders await President Bola Tinubu's assent to a bill for the establishment of the Southwest Development Commission, the sponsor of the bill, Senator Benga Daniel, representing Ugu East Senatorial District, is optimistic that when it gets presidential approval, the commission will, among other things, tackle the much-needed expansion of infrastructure in the southwest to deal with population explosion in the zone. Senator Benga Daniel was speaking in an interview with correspondent Doris Olumoko. What we have in the southwest, which we need to worry about, is population explosion. Our infrastructures are so heavily, um, uh, you know, compromised because of the number of people who are migrating to Southwest, basically to Lagos, and of course Greater Lagos for, of course, you know, it's Ogo State and other lo locations. Um, the population of Greater Lagos today is in excess of 20, 20 million, and the projection we have is that in another 25 years, probably about 55 million people will be, you know, habiting in Lagos or Go and environs. Um, that is why whatever we do in terms of infrastructure, the amount of trailers on our roads and all of that um, is really, really taking a toll. So we therefore need to take a, a second look as what and what government can also do um, to begin to prefer, prepare for this kind of challenges. So that's part of the reasons why we have come up with the Southwest Development Commission. And I'm very happy that um, it's making uh, some progress. We've had concurrence with the House of Rep. And I think once the, um, the, 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 the T's are crossed and the I's dotted, the B should be ready for presidential assets. The National Assembly Service Commission has approved the appointment of Kamoru Ogunlana as substantive clerk to the National Assembly. The appointment is effective from 2nd of February 2025. Mr. Ogunlana, who until his appointment was a deputy clerk to the National Assembly, takes over from Magaji Tambua as he proceeds on pre-retirement leave. The medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper, an annual ritual of the National Assembly, is a prelude to the presentation of the appropriation bill. As the legislature prepares for another cycle of national planning and budgeting, experts advise government to review fiscal policies in the coming year 2025 to address some economic realities. Joshua Ogunjide has more. The federal government must, not later than four months before the commencement of the next financial year, cause to be prepared and laid before the National Assembly and enter for the next three financial years. The Red Chamber has joined the consideration of the 2024 to 2026 medium term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper approved a borrowing plan of 7.8 trillion naira for 2024. 9 trillion naira budget deficit and total expenditure of 26 trillion naira for the 2024 fiscal year. Put the friendly, Nigeria's economy grew 3.19% in the second quarter of 2024, lifted by higher crude oil production and the performance of its services sector, while the oil sector, which accounts for the bulk of government revenue and foreign exchange reserves, expanded to 10.15%. Agriculture also grew by 1.41%. Just as industrial output rose to 3.53%. Data also shows that the nation recorded average daily oil output of 1.41 million barrels per day in the second quarter, instigating forecast of 3.1% growth in Nigeria's economy in 2024, as predicted by the IMF. This indeed has paved the way for infrastructure innovations in different parts of the country. It's important that we do everything possible in the next administration to, in the next. Yes, budget to 
um, deal with issues of foreign exchange in this country. Virtually everything has gone, you know, up because of foreign exchange. And I think it's all emanated from, you know, the, the fuel subsidy and what have you. So we expect and Nigerians expect that government will look inward, look into the sufferings of the masses in this 2025 budget and try as much as possible to alleviate the sufferings of Nigerians. The situation is very, very precarious and it's important that the government look into those areas, particularly bringing down the exchange rate. And this is a way that the Tinubu administration wants to rebuild Nigeria from one, one that is uh, reliant on petrol or, or, or petroleum products to one that is more dynamic. Experts likewise observe that more attention should be given to the living condition of the workforce in the new HEMTEF rather than focus on extra budgetary expenditure of MDAs. In all honesty, I think government should be thinking about reducing the manpower or the, the f workforce in the civil service, to be honest with you, because um, I think it's over bloated. And the government should think about what to diversify this workforce into. Uh, most civil servants today barely go to work, you know, because of the cost of transportation. And it's our view, or my opinion, that government should diversify this workforce into agriculture, encourage them to do more for agriculture and produce so that Nigerians will have food. And of course, you can't talk about agriculture without addressing the issue of safety, because some of us have farms. In Abuja, Joshua Wichley, continues. A bill seeking to issue out the Consolidated Revenue Fund of the state of more than 156.7 billion naira for supplementary and amended appropriation bill 2024 for the service of Nasarawa State Government has scaled second reading at the Nasarawa State House of Assembly. Adams Abdukadri completes the report. It will be recalled that on the 1st of December 2023, the State House of Assembly received 2024 appropriation bill of over 199.8 billion naira, tagged the budget of renewed commitment. Now, House is working on the supplementary budget of 156.6 billion naira. Majority leader Suleiman Yakubu Azara urging other lawmakers not just to look at the figure of the supplementary budget, but to underscore its potential to bolster the state's infrastructure saying the budget is critical for ongoing projects that will modernize infrastructure, aiming to create a more connected and developed natural state. He says the supplementary budget will directly enhance programs like NGKs, an initiative aimed at providing social safety net and economic relief to vulnerable Nigerians. This NGKs, there is a huge amount of money that we have gotten. And NGKs is doing a very good and wonderful work. And it's based on that because we have government that is a respecter of constitutional provision, that it gives it a right to bring this supplementary budget for us as legislature to do the needful so that they can continue to spend this money for the benefit of our people. So, Mr. Speaker, the money, may, somebody may look at it as huge. But the benefit is much. Speaker, National State House of Assembly, Dalla De Jato, however, appealed to fellow legislators through vote voice, highlighting the role of the budget in fulfilling the state's development agenda. This bill should scale through second reading, say aye. Those again say nay, the aye serve it. This is a bill that's passed through second reading. Uh, please, Committee on Finance and Appropriation. This bill is committed to you, to your committee, and you are to submit a report on the 12th of this month, 2024. Thank you. In Lafia, Adams Abdel Kadri, NTA News. Elsewhere, Kano State House of Assembly has called on the Ministry of Information and relevant stakeholders 
to create awareness on various interventions of the federal government for micro, small and medium enterprises alongside simplifying the loan application process by the respective bodies for easy access. This formed part of the recommendations of the House Committee on Commerce on the disbursement of loans and grants by the banks of industry. Samira Hamisu Shira reports on these and other engagements at the hallowed chamber. The assignment was given to the committee in May 2024 as a response to a motion moved by Representative Saluswe Ibrahim Muhammad on the low level of access by Kanu state indigents to various grants and loans in different sectors of the economy by the federal government. The committee recommends rigorous publicity drive on loan disbursements and procedures, as well as digitalizing the exercise to make it more efficient. In another development, the House has passed a resolution putting on hold the development of farmlands in some parts of Tofa, Ngugu, and Kumbuzu local government areas for the mass housing project of the state government after receiving a petition from some of the aggrieved communities, which was unanimously agreed to. From the Kano State House of Assembly, Samira Hamisushira, NTA News. We'll now take a break. The news continues shortly. Are you looking for a short channel to make your business, goods and services go viral? Look no further as NTA Parliament is your short channel. Take advantage of our wider reach and advertise your products and services on NTA Parliament DSTV channel 370, Go TV channel 126, Star Times channel 306 and Free TV channel 706. For more inquiries, contact the marketing department NTA Parliament NTA Headquarters Area 11 Gerke Abuja or call these numbers 080-383-40464 or 080-770-78055. NTA Parliament, strengthening Nigeria's democracy. The Defense Space Administration vows to continue to promote national security by safeguarding Nigeria's cyberspace and support military operations, leveraging its expertise in cybernetic space technology. Air Vice Marshal Langre Ibrahim Oluwato stated this during an oversight visit by the House Committee on Defense. National Assembly correspondent Issa Mohammed reports. Air Vice Marshal Larry Oluwato says, Defense space threatens the cyberspace capabilities of the Nigerian armed forces in ensuring they remain effective in the face of a DSA mission is to support the armed forces of Nigeria and other security agencies with relevant space products and solutions necessary for the conduct of our operation in peace and wartime in line with the national space policy and program. The committee chairman notes that the visit is coming on the heels of the 2025 appropriation bill to enable the legislature to scrutinize the budgets. In support of these security goals, the House has introduced innovative legislation aimed at revolutionizing and funding the Nigerian defense sector. Key among this is the Nigerian Armed Forces Support Fund Bill which seeks to establish a five-year five -year funding framework independent of annual budget allocations. We have also proposed a bill to amend the Armed Forces Act to provide for the setting up of a defense space force in Nigeria. This, he explains, will enhance military space technology in combat crimes and improve intelligent gathering capabilities. The committee further assures DSA of adequate legislative provisions to support and enable it perform its role effectively and efficiently to safeguard the territorial integrity of the nation. In Abuja, Isa Muhammad, NTA News. In another development, a bill for an act establishing Dr. Umaru Sada Amodu College of Health Technology, Lokoja, Kogi State, has passed second reading at the floor of the State House of Assembly. Speaker Umar Ali Yusuf says the institute, when established, will increase health care personnel and generate employment opportunities in Kogi State. Jacob Sani reports that two other motions were also deliberated upon at plenary. 
prompted by the low number of health personnel in Kogi State, especially Lokoja, the state capital. The speaker says education is a hub of development in any society and that health education is of paramount need. Members of the House described the bill as timely. It is the very well of the bill to support this bill so that this group will come on board. This bill is a high nature that needs to be supported for its speedy passage. I wish this bill be given an accelerated passage. So really appreciate our meeting leader the right honorable speaker of this noble assembly. The bill is so timely, and for the purpose of equity and fairness, the bill will go. A motion of urgent public importance calling on the Kogi State Government to establish a rehabilitation center for victims of abuse of drug and other mental health challenges was also presented on the floor by member representing local Jawan state constituency, being a buyer chief of Tijani. I want also that for this state, we have a rehabilitation and counseling center. The motion generated interest with lawmakers making their contributions. The House commended the state governor, Ahmed Usman Dodo, for deploying joint security personnel to crisis areas in Omala local government areas of Kogi state and an appeal to state governor to implement measures to rebuild the affected communities. Member representing Omala State Constituency, Yaya Omar, moved the motion. Now that the security has improved in my local government, there is need for me to appeal to the state government to come in and see how they can assist to rebuild the society back. Lawmakers in their separate remarks aligned with a request, the House adjourn to the next legislative day. Jacob Sani, NTN News. The Lagos State House of Assembly is taking a bold step to strengthen the capacity of public works cooperation with a view to addressing the deplorable state of the roads in several parts of Lagos State Metropolis. The step is being taken through a bill to repeal the law establishing Lagos State Public Works Corporation sponsored by Chairman Committee on Works and Infrastructure at a plenary presided over by the Speaker Mudashiru Obasa in Lagos. Musa Toliat completes the report. Dilapidated and failed sections on several roads have continued to waste man hours by creating needless traffic in some parts of the metropolis. With your kind permission, Mr. Speaker, sir, may I move that a bill for a law to establish the Lagos State Public Works Corporation to develop and maintain road networks in the state and for connected purposes be read for the second time. This bill seeks to repeal the, the Lagos... bill sponsored by Chairman, Committee on Works and Infrastructure, Desmond Elliott, is therefore aimed at repealing the law that established the Public Works Corporation and strengthen the agency to be more effective in addressing road construction and reconstruction in Lagos. If I bring us to subsection 1, um, subsection E, um, where it talks about the collaboration between this corporation and international slash local organizations um, for the purpose of effective work and also to um, increase their capacity. Contributions from some lawmakers indicate the challenges of bad roads is widespread in their various constituencies. I want a situation where, if possible, their subvention must be first-line charge so that they will release the money as at the time that they will be able to work, not during the rainy season, that when they work, the rain will wash away the asphalt. That is what we have experienced over years. The bill states that 
the corporation has the power to do construction. At this material time, and judging by the level of the inflation in our economy, I'm sure that if this bill is passed with this function, the issue of variation to contracts being issued to our contractors where this corporation can actually function will help to reduce that kind of cost on the government. Section 10 of 10 L that talk about uh, obtaining loan. Since this agency is going to operate under the purview of the state government, I don't think it's necessary for them to mandate them to take loan. As soon as the state government is positioned to allocate loan to run the agency. According to the section 301C, uh, uh, with your kind permission, Arit, sir, uh, promote organized private sector participation in the realization of functions of the corporation. Uh, Mr. Speaker, however, there should be a, a clear guidance uh, on the scope and terms of such uh, collaboration to avoid conflict and ensure that public interest is prioritized over profit motive. Section A says, construct, maintain, and rehabilitate public roads and road furniture. I would like to add um, equitably across the five divisions of Lagos to that, so that in the discharge of their duties, they will always take into consideration picking projects from all the nooks and crannies of Lagos. The bill also seeks to reconstitute the board of the Public Works Corporation. The issue of the secretary and the legal, legal advisor. Since we are having legal advisor and the secretary, the work of the secretary is different entirely from the legal advisor. While the secretary has his own duty, I don't think it is necessary we ask the secretary to be a legal practitioner. The issue of regulation, there should be a clause here talking about regulation, how regulations will be made for that particular um, body as the case may be. After extensive deliberations, Speaker Lagos House of Assembly, Mudashiru Obasa, committed the bill which has killed the second reading to the Committee on Works and Infrastructure. The committee is to report back to the Assembly in two weeks. In Lagos, Musa Toliat, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, has appealed to political parties in Ondo State to maintain peace throughout the election process, emphasizing the importance of a harmonious environment before, during, and after the gubernatorial election. The chairman of the commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, was speaking during an assessment of the mock accreditation exercise, which took place in various wards within Akure South and Idanre local government areas of the state. Ife Olua Omosule reports. Accreditation of voters, which is the main process that precedes voting, is one of the crucial aspects of every election as it helps to verify the eligibility of voters, to examine the workability of the bimodal voters accreditation system, BIVAS, which will be deployed for the Ondo State governorship election. The Independent National Electoral Commission conducted a mock accreditation exercise in six local government areas in the three senatorial districts of the state. Some of the accredited voters who described the process as satisfactory also expressed readiness to cast their ballots in the November 16th governorship election. Don't worry. I have not wasted my time. The accreditation started around 8.30 and the people came out. Many of the people have done their own before they go back to their houses. I was satisfied with the process. By God's grace, I will come out for election. The INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, who encouraged voters to come out en masse to exercise their civic responsibility, also assured them that the commission has adopted proactive measures for a seamless electoral process. As we have been assured by the EOs, and we have seen the, as we have seen the level of preparations made, we will ensure that all the polling units open on time so that voters will not come and wait for INEC officials and materials. The commission's team also visited Ileolu, Giokegbo, Idore and Ondoi's local government areas to inspect the non-sensitive materials received so far. In Akure, Ifeoluwa, Moshule, NTA News. After any election comes the greater responsibility of governance. For a real Democrat, Sentiments are set aside because the collective interest of the nation is greater than any parochial or party interest. In Nigeria, for instance, 
After the 2023 general elections, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has demonstrated this through recent appointments of non-APC members in his cabinet. Timothy Yusuf takes us into the journey where the PDP and APGA are beneficiaries. President Bola Tinubu constituting his cabinet upon taking over the running of the affairs of Nigeria appointed a leading PDP member and former governor of River State, Yesom Wiki, as one of his ministers. It was a surprise to many. I'm not here for any party. I'm here for the interests of Nigeria and for the unity of this uh, country. I'm still a PDP member. I've never hidden my position on that. By partisan leadership that Mr. President is dispensing, at the risk of being accused of flattery, we really appreciate Mr. President and Mr. Winter. Again, giving him this office of the FCT, which is like a state, in spite of the fact that he killed one of us as a PDP member, has shown the kind of leadership that Mr. President has. I want to say I once benefited like this when I was in ANPP and stayed in this office as a minister. Not enough. President Tinubu took his government of inclusivity further by appointing former Nigerian ambassador and wife of the founder of ABGA and Biafra warlord, the late Chukwe Meka Odumeko Chuku, as minister. I'm very, very good. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Nigerian leaders are implored to, in this direction, recommit to the values of inclusivity, accountability and transparency to guarantee a flourishing democracy. We are very confident that the new persons who have been added to this team will go along with us to ensure that we move in a very meaningful and purposeful manner. It's a high time for state governors to also emulate Mr. President of his inclusivity governors. Political actors believe that after 25 years of uninterrupted democracy, it was time for all Nigerians to partake in building a nation where every voice is heard, potential realized and citizens empowered to contribute to the collective good of the country. We should welcome development to have appointment being made at the federal level, not just from the party in power, but from other political parties. But it didn't end there. I will congratulate the president. He's doing well and he uh, should keep uh, doing more of this. Nigeria is running a multi-party democratic system in a presidential system. We're not running a parliamentary system where you have, you know, seats allotted based on, you know, number of votes that are cast and all that. It's a winner takes it all presidential system. And this presidential system needs to have, that, have a position. That's why you need to look at section 222 to 229 where multi-party democracy was formed and was given better in the constitution. Politicians are enjoined to prioritize citizens' needs as democracy was all about the populace has been exemplified by President Bola Tinubu, Timothy Yusuf, NTA News. And that's it on Parliamentary News. For updates on trending reports and other programs, follow the platforms on the screen. Once again, I am Stella Inameti.